So I'm here with Eric from uh, Tony's Trains and QSI. So Eric, what have you got to show us? Well, today we're demonstrating the new QSI Titan decoder and we've been working on new software to load into the decoder that we call Q3 emulation technology. And what we're trying to do is bring digital command control to the next generation of operating like the prototype. That sounds cool. Good. So what kind of things can you do? Well, what we can do is we can have this locomotive uh, being manipulated by any type of cab control, in this instance, an NCE hand controller. And what we're trying to do is have this locomotive operate like the real thing. So you can, what we're trying to do is scale the physics down of what what a real ra railroad engine would do so it can take off slowly, quickly, depending upon the load that you have behind it. So for instance, I have this locomotive programmed just to kind of creep along at a slow speed. And I'm just gonna move forward a little bit and you're gonna hear the engine RPM hopefully idle up over the crowd noise here. But you're gonna see it gradually take off and then you're gonna see it gradually slow down. So let's just take a quick look at that. Okay. So right now, I've gone up about two speed notches. Nice, yeah. And then I'm just gonna simply slow down and apply the brakes. Very nice. Now, Part of the software features of what we're loading into this locomotive not only allow me to change the dynamics of the train, but we can also change all of the sound variables that go into this locomotive. So for instance, you can control the overall, you control all of your uh, various controls using these sliders. So it's just simply a simple mouse click use and you can just move things back and forth. This is the screen that controls your uh, you again, overall sound. So right now I'm just turning the overall volume of the locomotive down. And then I'll just reset it back up to its max. Okay. On this particular page, you also get your automatic timeouts. I can also uh, manipulate uh, Doppler effects for my horn. Uh, the different type of uh, bell actuator sound, etc., etc. This next screen controls the volumes for all of the locomotive sounds, and we have over 30 different sounds on this decoder using this software. So again, slider control. This particular locomotive is using has two prime movers, so I can make one prime mover just a little bit quieter. Okay. So I'm just, I can change the volume of the second prime mover or the first prime mover. And again, I can scroll down. I can control air dryer volumes, alternate horn. The list goes on. We have 30 different, over 30 different sounds. Very nice, very nice. So as an engineer background, right? You told us earlier that you have an engineer background. So then that, is something that the, the user can do to actually make it feel like they're running a real locomotive more than a model? Yes, what we're trying to do is make it easier for the user to match up the movement of the locomotive to the sounds of the locomotive. So it really becomes almost like the real thing. Oh, that's very nice. So just to kind of give you an example of the ability to change things, Joe. So on this particular page, because this is a stereo decoder, it's got two speakers located, one in the front, one in the rear. I can change the balance of the horn so it comes out in the front of the locomotive. I can also add more bell to the front of the locomotive. And then on my prime movers, I'm gonna take my front engine and move it to the front and I'm gonna take my rear engine and locate it more towards the rear. 
I can also do that for all 30 sounds. Amazing. Let's go to, uh, when I, let's say for example, I idle up to uh, speed step 30, I can have the locomotive be a little bit louder underneath the mid RPM volume. I can then, when I'm at full maximum RPM, I'm gonna have maximum volume. I can then go in and do the same thing for the exhaust. So on my idle exhaust, if the locomotive is just standing there or coasting, I can turn that idle way down for if the locomotive is experiencing a medium amount of force on it, I can have that exhaust turned up and again on max uh, RPM. We also have labored sounds. So as there's more, let's say you're, you're carrying a heavy train just from idle turning it down but then let's say when the locomotive start, first starts to pull on that train I'm gonna have it all the way up and then maybe in a coasting but at a high speed I can turn that exhaust down so really the combinations are infinite for the user to change to his own taste and desire yeah I'm sitting there thinking I have found a new <laughs> hobby <laughs> Well, I found that the more I play with it, the more I learn, and the more I learn, the more I play with it. Yeah. Going away from the sounds for a minute, we make it really easy to change both the acceleration and deceleration rates. Now, what I, use, what I usually do is I save CV3 and 4 for when I'm actually operating the locomotive, and I set CV23 and 24 before I operate, meaning CV23 and 24 will act as acceleration rates for when the locomotive is light. And then using my cab held momentum button, I can change the acceleration deceleration rates of three and four for when I'm out on the main. So as the tonnage of my train changes up and down, yeah. I can use though this button automatically and change in route. It's really, really uh, functional and easy to use. We also offer speed tables. You can create your own consisting buttons for when you run locomotives and, com and consist. And then really an outstanding feature that we do is, is you can start assigning all different functions to every part of your handheld. And I'm just gonna pull down a small drop down. So for instance, function one, I can have it control all of these items from Doppler, to dynamic, flange brakes, front marker, grade crossing, any number of combinations. And that's strictly forward and reverse. We haven't even gotten into neutral. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So again, it's, it's a powerful program and it really lets the user design his locomotive to how he wants to set it up. Very nice. I don't know how many people I've talked to that are rail fans, and they say, but I can't get the model to sound like the real thing, like I remember. I think that this particular sound file that we have in this locomotive, the GE uh, 16 FDL, is superb. My own experience running the uh, Dash 8, which used this locomotive, or this locomotive engine, I think, is a dead ringer. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you very much, Eric. Joel, a pleasure. Trainmasters TV, coming this fall, only from Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine.